Primary. Thanks for coming online today. We are going to sing some songs together, hear some stories together. All will we learn from this week's Come Follow Me lesson found in Doctrine and Covenants, section 102 to 105. Are you ready? Let's get started. First up, we are going to watch a video called A Tale of Two Trucks. As we watch it, I want you to think about what would you do if you were one of the truck drivers? Once there was a truck driver who drove a blue truck. He was making an important delivery that was very far away. There was another truck driver who was driving a gray truck. This truck driver was also making a very important delivery that was far away. The blue truck driver was running out of gas. He started to look around for a gas station. The gray truck driver was also running out of gas. And he also started to look around for a gas station. The blue truck driver found a gas station, but there was a problem. The gray truck driver found the same gas station, and they got to the pump at the same time. I was here first, the blue truck driver said. Move out of the way, please. No, I was here first, the gray truck driver said. You move out of the way. You weren't here first. I was. Now move. No way. I was here first. Now move out of the way. Hey, you broke my truck. No, you broke my truck. I was here first. You move out of the way. No, you move. This is called contention. In the end, both of the trucks were broken. None of them were able to get gas, and both of the truck drivers were very angry. Jesus taught us that it's not good to contend with one another. Instead, Jesus taught us to be peacemakers. Let's see what would happen if these truck drivers were trying to be peacemakers instead. Oh, hi there, the gray truck driver said. Why don't you go first? Oh, that's nice of you, the blue truck driver said. But that's okay, you can go first. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Have a nice drive, the gray truck driver said. Thanks, you too, the blue truck driver said. When the truck drivers were trying to be peacemakers, none of the trucks were broken. They both got gas. And they were both happy. And lift up an ensign of peace and make a proclamation of peace unto the ends of the earth. So, what would you have done if you were driving one of those trucks? Would you have started the fight? Or would you have let the other truck driver get gas first? How did it make you feel 
when they were fighting. Wasn't it kind of sad, maybe even a little scary? It's never fun to fight, and it never feels good when you get into a fight with someone else. Heavenly Father has asked us to always try to be peacemakers in our homes, in our families, at school, with our neighbors, and all the activities that we participate in. He wants us to be followers of Jesus Christ and love everyone. He says in Doctrine and Covenants section 105, verse 38, And again, I say unto you, sue for peace, not only to the people that have smitten you, but also to all people. So in that scripture, he says that even when people are trying to start fights with us or trying to be mean to us, we shouldn't try to fight back. We should try to find a way to show peace and love, even if they don't seem to want to give it in return. Jesus said, love everyone. Does that sound familiar? I think it is. We've sung a song called that before. Why don't we sing it right now? Back in the days of Joseph Smith, the saints were treated horribly by the people that lived around them. Mobs of people were trying to get the saints to leave and doing extremely mean things to them. There were a lot of saints who thought that if they could get enough people together, they could build an army to go and fight against these mobs and stop them from doing the horrible things they were doing. So many enlisted in what was called the Camp of Israel, and they began their long march from Ohio to Missouri, thinking they were going to defeat these mobs. But Heavenly Father had a different plan for them. Let's watch the story of Zion's camp. Chapter 36, Zion's Camp, February through June, 1834. While people in Missouri were making the saints leave their homes, Joseph Smith was nearly 1,000 miles away in Kirtland, Ohio. He prayed to know how to help the saints in Missouri. In a revelation, Jesus told Joseph that some of the men in the church should go to Missouri to help the saints. Joseph Smith was to be their leader. The Lord wanted 500 men to go. Joseph obeyed the Lord. He told the saints that 500 men should go to the land of Zion in Missouri. But after a few weeks, only 100 had said they would go. The 100 men left Kirtland and began the long journey to Missouri. The group was called Zion's Camp. The men often walked 35 miles a day, despite being very hungry, thirsty, and hot. They camped together at night. On the way, 100 more men joined them. But there were still not as many men as the Lord wanted. Members of the camp traveled 1,000 miles, some of them said the trip was too hard. They complained and argued. They blamed Joseph Smith when there wasn't enough good food. They said he wasn't a good leader. Joseph told these men that they must repent or they would get sick and die. Many of the men in the camp were righteous. They helped Joseph and obeyed God's commandments. At last, Zion's camp got near Jackson County, Missouri. They camped by a river. Members of a mob had spied on the camp and knew where it was. At night, the mob came close to the camp and planned to attack it. God protected Zion's camp by sending a big storm. The wind blew trees down. Large hailstones fell from the sky and lightning hit trees. The river flooded the land. One man in the mob was killed by lightning. Another man in the mob were hurt by the storm. No one in Zion's camp was hurt. The men in the mob were afraid and ran away. They did not hurt anyone in Zion's camp. Three days after the storm, the Lord gave Joseph Smith a revelation. He said the saints would have to wait to build the city of Zion. They needed to become more obedient, giving, and united. They also needed to learn more about the things the Lord required of them. 
The Lord also told the men of Zion's camp that they should not fight against the Missouri mobs. Some of the men were upset about this. They felt that the trip would not be worthwhile if they did not fight to help the saints in Missouri. A few days later, many men in Zion's camp got very sick. Fourteen of them died. The prophet told the men that the sickness would go away if they would humble themselves and repent. This promise was fulfilled. At the end of Zion's camp, Joseph Smith met with the saints in Missouri and chose men for a high council. A few days later, he and many of the men in Zion's camp started back to Kirtland. Although the men of Zion's camp did not help the saints in Missouri, the camp was still valuable. It helped prepare Brigham Young and others for leadership in the church. They were able to prove whether they would be obedient and make sacrifices for the Lord's work. A few months later, many of those who were faithful were called as leaders in the church. Those people in Zion's camp thought they were going to go and make Zion stronger by defeating their enemies through battle. Instead, many were made stronger by learning that it is more important to follow the Savior, by listening to his prophets, and by having faith to keep the commandments even when you don't fully understand. It is so important for us to continue to try to strive to keep the commandments as we learn and grow step by step in the gospel. Our Heavenly Father knows what's best for us, and He will always lead us in the direction that is best for us. I believe that we need to try to be like Jesus in everything that we do and say. time we get some wiggles out. Everybody stand up. Stand up.
it felt good to stand up. Okay, one more thing before we go. I want to review the article of faith that we've been learning this month, the 10th article of faith. It is a great goal to try to memorize our articles of faith. They help us to know and remember what we believe in as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, who remembers how it starts? 10. Gathering of Israel We believe in the literal gathering of Israel and in the restoration of the ten tribes, that Zion, the new Jerusalem, will be built upon the American continent, that Christ will reign personally upon the earth, and that the earth will be renewed and receive its paradisiacal glory. The scriptures teach us so many important things that happened in the past and are going to happen in the future. Like what? The Bible teaches of a prophet named Jacob. Later, God changed his name to Israel. He had 12 sons who grew into 12 tribes or groups of families. The area they lived in became known as Israel. I've heard of Israel. But the Assyrian army destroyed the kingdom of Israel and 10 of the 12 tribes were carried away. Oh no! The 10 tribes are now scattered and mixed throughout the nations of the world and we're not quite sure where they all are. So we call them the Lost 10 Tribes. Are the tribes gonna ever be found? Yes, missionaries are sent to gather the tribes spiritually, which means teach them the gospel, and baptize them as members of the church. Right now, members are establishing Zion in their own countries. What Zion? Zion is wherever the righteous saints are gathered. Like in churches. One day, all the tribes will be gathered literally to a place God has prepared for them. Yay! The old Jerusalem will be a gathering place, and Zion, the new Jerusalem, will be built upon the American continent as another gathering place. Christ will return to earth and rule in righteousness. Yay! Then the earth will become a paradise. Oh, I can't wait. family was scattered all over, like Israel's family, then I would probably want to find as many as I could. At first I probably wouldn't miss them and then eventually I'd miss fighting with them and having fun with them and spending time together. <laughs> I think Zion will be full of kindness and happiness. When Christ reigns on the earth, I think it would, there would be not that much wars. I think there won't be that much hunger or sickness. I think everyone will be a lot happier because he is a ruler that actually cares about us and our happiness. And I think that's why Heavenly Father wants to gather up the ten tribes so that they can be a family again. Thanks for joining me this week. 
If you want to participate and be a part of these videos, ask your parents if they would help you record giving a talk or reading one of your favorite scriptures, and I will try to include it in one of our weeks as we are here having primary online. Have a great week, stay safe, and stay healthy. See you later. Bye.